This is our third video in the pharmacology series and today's topic is aminoglycoside and in this video we're going to go through these topics classification of aminoglycoside, mechanism of action of aminoglycoside, mechanism of resistance of aminoglycoside, adverse effect of aminoglycoside and at last we're going to go brief on some of the drug in this group. Aminoglycosides are called so because it consists of polybasic amino groups linked glycosidically to two or more amino sugar residue. Since it consists of sugar, it is water soluble. Being water soluble make it unlikely to get absorbed through gastrointestinal tract, so we need to give them intramuscularly or intravenously. Similarly, being water soluble also make it unable to cross the blood brain barrier and excrete through the urine in an unchanged form. These drugs primarily act on gram negative bacilli and do not inhibit anaerobes. Aminoglycoside don't act on gram positive bacteria because they have comparatively thick cell wall. And it doesn't act on anaerobes because aminoglycoside requires oxygen dependent transport mechanism on the cell membrane to enter inside the cell. Now let's talk about classification of aminoglycoside. It can be classified as systemic aminoglycoside and topical aminoglycosides. Under the systemic glycoside, there are natural aminoglycosides such as streptomycin, gentamicin, canamycin, tobramycin, and sisomycin. Similarly, on the semi-synthetic category, there is amecacin and nettlemycin. In topical aminoglycoside, there is neomycin and framicetin. Mechanism of action Mechanism of action of aminoglycoside can be explained in two main steps. First is transport of the aminoglycoside through the bacterial cell wall and cytoplasm. And the next is binding to the ribosome resulting in the inhibition of protein synthesis. Here in this figure we have bacterial cell wall, periplasmic space and cytoplasm. Aminoglycoside transfer through the cell wall to the periplasmic space through the porin channel and it is transmitted from the periplasmic space to the cytoplasm by oxygen dependent active process. Once inside the ribosome, streptomycin specifically binds to the 30S ribosomal subunit. Other aminoglycoside bind to the 50S subunit or 30-50S interferes. After binding to the ribosome, they freeze the initiation of protein synthesis by preventing the polysome formation, promoting their disaggregation to monosomes. 30S, 50S interface binding aminoglycosides cause distortion of mRNA codon recognition, resulting in misreading of code. So the abnormal peptide chains are produced, resulting in no protein formation. Mechanism of resistance. Mechanism of resistance occurs in three ways. One of the ways is inactivating enzyme produced by the bacteria which either phosphorylate or adenylate or acetylate the antibiotic. Thus formed conjugated antibiotic can't bind to the target ribosome. Similarly, there might be a mutation that decreases the affinity of the ribosome protein that normally bind to the aminoglycoside. Or there might be decreased efficiency of the transporting mechanism. Now let's talk about the adverse effect of aminoglycoside. Number one is autotoxicity. This drug gets concentrated in the labyrinthine fluids and are slowly removed when the plasma concentration falls. But when there is high plasma concentration of the drug, vestibular and cochlear sensory cells and hairs undergoes concentration dependent destructive changes, leading to progressive hearing loss and symptoms such as headache, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and nystagmus. Aminoglycoside is contraindicated with loop diuretics since they are also autotoxic. Next adverse effect is uh, nephrotoxicity. Aminoglycoside attain high concentration in renal cortex. And in this way, nephrotoxicity is manifested as tubular damage resulting in loss of urinary concentrating power, low glomerular filtration rate, nitrogen retention, albuminuria, and casts. Neuromuscular damage is another distinctive adverse effect. All aminoglycosides reduce acetylcholine release from the motor nerve endings. 
They interfere with mobilization of centrally located synaptic vesicle to fuse with terminal membrane and ultimately decreases the sensitivity of muscle input to acetylcholine. These drugs are teratogenic as well since they cause eighth cranial knob damage to the fetus and also cause autotoxicity of the fetus. Hypersensitivity reactions are also observed. Now let's talk about some of the drugs in short. Streptomycin It is the oldest amino glycoside obtained from Streptomyces griseus. It is narrow spectrum, less potent and least nephrotoxic than other amino glycoside. It is known for its use to treat tuberculosis and uh, also used in subacute bacterial endocarditis, bubonic plague and tularemia. Gentamicin is one of the most commonly used amino glycoside since it is cheap and more potent. It has broader spectrum of action under the gram-negative rods and gram-positive cocci. Neomycin, our next drug, is highly toxic to the internal ear and to the kidney. It is therefore not used systemically. It is generally given orally before surgery. Amikacin, it is resistant against bacterial aminoglycoside inactivating enzyme. So this drug have widest spectrum. Cisomycin on the other hand is more potent on pseudomonas and a few other gram-negative bacilli and beta-hemolytic streptococci than gentamicin. Nettlemycin, on the other hand, is semi-synthetic derivative of a cisomycin. This drug is resistant to bacterial amino glycoside inactivating enzyme. Topramycin, generally used as alternative to gentamicin, it is effective against Pseudomonas and Proteus, including resistant gentamicin. This was all about amino glycoside. If you learn anything new from this please consider subscribing to our channel.